Okay, for people joining this live stream, this is the first of, I think, six of these for today. Um, and for things that we are preparing for the next version of Wolf Language. So first we have a look at, this should be the last look at this RDF and Sparkle package. Um, now the documentation, are we calling it graph store? Is that, the, is that what we are referring to it as? Yeah, that was the name you proposed as the term for that contains RDF and Sparkle and potentially in the future other graph related things. Do you think it makes sense? I'm okay with it. I don't have a bad idea because it's not just RDF or just Sparkle. It's a container for both of these things. Great documentation search does not work. Can whoever's project managing please report that? Um, where is this hanging off? Is this hanging off here, for example? By the way, also, this is almost unreadably light. Another thing to report, please. Who's, who is, who's project managing here? Andrea, I'm here. Okay, can you respond then? Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Um, so now where is this going to go from the root guide page? We haven't done that knitting yet, right? No, this 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 step we haven't done. Okay. Um, oops. Well, th this this page isn't this isn't correctly set up yet. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, that's a, that's a separate thing to be to be thought about. Um, it would help to know where that's getting knitted in because that would help us understand whether graph store is the right name for this. Um, I guess that the, then the meta question a little bit, do we consider this to be a pre-version of the future fully integrated one or is it a self-contained outside one surfing an existing standard? The latter, okay, in my opinion. Oh, for some reason that, oh yeah, it got lighter. That doesn't work, right? Now, Andrea, you saw that, right? No, can you paint it again? Okay, the pull down mm -hmm. is darker there than it is there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah, we'll report that. Well, so, so do we have uh, a do we have a precedent for linking from system functions to non-system functions? But but, but where, wouldn't that be then not either a subpart or a fourth part under external interfaces and connections to the right of databases? Well, here, so this is, yeah, this is, right, this is good. This is, by the way, um, obviously the, the stuff with the database integration needs to get onto this page, right? Uh, I think there's a meeting after this, yeah. Yes, but Stephen, uh, let's not forget that currently uh, this is about uh, the database link mostly. I'm well aware, I'm well aware. Yeah, yeah, so sure. obviously this has to have at the top the new stuff and then it will be followed by some of these uh, connectivity things, right? Yeah. So I suspect this is a page that this has to go on to and maybe it's just to see also from the knowledge representation page, although that seems a shame for the graph store stuff. All right, let's go look at the graph store stuff now. So... That's not how we typically would do this. First of all, that's the wrong font there, right? That should be italicized. Yeah. yeah. QA is looking into it. Okay. Why do we don't usually have a thing called RDF concepts? It's not usually the a type of thing that we'd have on a guide page, right? What is Sparkle update? What the heck is that? There's an update language to update. Okay, RDF but that's not the right title for a guide page at all. Michael, you're aware of this. 
No, it's not the well. It's completely the wrong name. Right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay, fine. So you didn't have, but I mean, you you are aware that it is wrong, but you haven't looked at it. Is that Correct. It? Okay. Fine. Fine. That's good. That's 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 perfectly okay. So it just needs to be. No, I mean, it, th th these are action type things at the top. Um, Okay, so why doesn't this say, I don't understand why this doesn't say graph store package symbol. That's how those usually are set up. What happened here? Well, it's, it says that below experimental. I, I know, but that's wrong. Like, for example, if I go look at, um, Andrea, this is, this is for you to deal with. I mean, this is, if I go look at this, oh, wow. Well, it doesn't look the way I thought it looked. No, oh, maybe it's okay. Maybe it says this. All right, okay. I could do with a little bit less space there, I think. All right, fair enough. Why doesn't this have a um that should have Andrea, that's missing it's um it's thumbnail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is missing also on this page. Yeah, I reported that once, but I will follow up. Okay. Um, boy, there's a lot of detail here. Okay. So is this what we're doing? We're repeating the needs graph store in the documentation? Basically, each example group needs its own needs. There are two DSF containers scoped. Yeah. You know, it's always a bad sign when the basic examples involve, you know, 15 lines of code. But I guess it is what it is. Is this really what you want to do here with all of this detail, with these the, having to define these functions, even in a basic example? We, we could also have a query string example as opposed to symbolic. But well, I feel like even this one of these examples where while it's long, it's extremely verbose and repetitive. Yeah, okay. So you claim the cognitive length is not large. Exactly. Well, I don't entirely disagree about that. Okay. Oops. That has been renamed now to RDF store. So instead of an RDF data set and an RDF graph, we have now an RDF store. Represents an typo. Yes. Okay. There's a lot of work here. Just so long as it's not a recipe for turtle soup. No, this would be in food data. What? The, the, the turtle <laughs> soup? <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay. What is this? So there, I, I define these namespaces two times in two different ways because for the letter comparison of symbolic queries versus string queries. Sorry, I don't understand. What's the, what, what's the point of seeing this? Those namespaces, I, I use them later in queries. The first block- Oh, I see, I see, just in, just in this example file. Yes. Well, you know, this kind of suggests to me, you know, is it the case that our external reference mechanism, is this related to our external reference mechanism? Should it be? So you don't have to define these all, or are these just very specialized things? 
those those are short hands for IRIs. I, and, I can see that. And, yeah. and the issue is that those prefixes are not really standardized. They are just convention. That means it's not really easy to come up with a way to define them by default. Sorry, I mean, are these particular IRIs something particularly notable or not? <laughs> yes, like the RDF and RDF schema. Well, so why are we doing this as, as, as repeated top-level code? If everybody's going to need them, why don't we have a built-in way of accessing them? We could do that for a limited number, for ones that are very well known. Would we put them into a deeper context, like graph store, backtick vocabulary? Back no, tick. no, no. We would have a function that is like external reference, right? right. Mm -hmm. That just names these things with string names of some kind. Right? Yes. So that what you can say is, for example, I don't know whether this is the right thing, but you know, like we have external reference, well, which we don't have yet, but but this thing here could be, you know, external RDF, identifier. Comma, what's that? Identifier, oh, not, not reference. Is, okay. Which we also don't have, but that was that's the name. That right. But I mean, so would it make discuss. sense to have something like this, where we have a, you know, the the category of thing, and then whatever that uh, the payload is there. Yes, something like this we could have. We could have some default prefixes. So we would have to review which ones are used commonly and how consistent. Yeah, yeah right. And how do they? Maybe a mechanism for a user to introduce new ones. Fine. Well, I mean, the mechanism, I believe, an external identifier, uh, yes. I mean, that's a different issue, introducing new ones. But at least for us, we can curate some set of these. Yes. And I think for RDF8, there might be a list of default namespaces or prefix, but I have to look into that. Okay. All right. So does this is this consistent with your understanding, Alan, that this would be a reasonable thing to use external identifier for? Uh, yes. I mean, this is this is what we had we had talked about before. Some some of these things would definitely be sensible built-in things that we have some string to represent the prefix. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Do I have to run this? Well, the RDF graph has been renamed to RDF store now. Oops, why didn't that, why, didn't, why wasn't I able to edit this? Is this, what is that thing? What is going on here? What is this? this, well, this, that this was a you, you copy pasted this, didn't this, you? Yes, that was copy and pasted. Okay, so that's why I can't edit it. Um, so is this going to work or is this not going to work? No. Okay. What does RDF lang string? Yes, I have renamed that already to RDF string. You had mentioned this the last time. Okay. So what are we looking at in this meeting then? So in this meeting, I'd like to review quickly the names if you spent anything weird. like and, and therefore, to look at the three guide pages, they list all the names that are introduced, like maybe start with RDF concept or Sparkle query. Those are the basic building blocks to, that we need to represent RDF data. What is a shorthand? What does that mean? It means that uh, RDF has its own mechanism for representing lists as linked lists, and that is very verbose to write. That's but don't say a shorthand. Right? Just say represents. Just say what it represents. I don't know what a shorthand means. Yeah. I, I don't even know what this. I don't know what this means. Collection of the EI using the RDF collection vocabulary. What does that mean? 
So these items are represented as a linked list in the graph using RDF first and RDF rest and RDF nil. And you can write that manually, but yeah, it's it's difficult. So when you use that instead, this RDF collection instead, it is expanded to that representation. So why, you, why is that the right name? I don't understand what that, what, why should it be called RDF collection? It's the technical term for that from the standard. So you could evaluate the basic example and then do first of the RDF store to see what that expands to. But it's a complicated thing. Whatever. I don't know what that was. So first of this. The heck is that? Well, it seems like UUID is broken in that build, but it's not a graph store. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Okay. So what it's am I supposed to see here? So, so you you see how this linked list is represented using multiple triples. Yeah. You say they are their first and other first. So to not make the user write that out every time they talk about lists, we introduce the RDF collection. Well, it's, in, it's inspired by Sparkle and Turtle syntax. It's basically the same. But I don't understand what this means at all. And I don't understand why it's not in a sublist here. We could put it in a sublist, yes. But is it, in fact, the, the equivalent of a list of things that just doesn't happen to be represented by a linked list? No, it's, it expands to a linked list. No, no, I, I understand that. But I'm asking you, this is a way of doing it without explicitly representing it as a linked list. Is that right? Uh, if I understand it right, yes. It's because there's no list data type in RDF. All right, should I go and edit these pages or how should we be doing this? Oh, I'm not able to edit these pages because it doesn't get set up correctly, is that right? It's not in CVS, it's in Git. Then I can't edit these pages. So I'm, I'm telling you that should be re reworded to be something like, you know, represents a list-like collection of the RDF entities or whatever you call it, E sub I. In functions, this this does not help me. This is just confusing, right? Yes. Okay. So let, let's keep going here. So I don't know why that isn't called type here, but anyway. And why does this, what are the possible types? It doesn't say. So in, in principle, a user can introduce their own type and defining what it means, and then applications are free to interpret it or not. In some basic from uh, basic types from XML schema are automatically supported. So like dates, numbers are automatically converted to Wolfram language forms. Oh, so it should be saying that in the documentation. Yes, I can give examples, yeah. What does that, that's not the right way. Usually we give a description, okay. Line-based format? Yes, in the sense that you can read line by line and get one triple out. I see. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Oops. Uh, we don't have any see alsos on this page. How come? Right, that should have see alsos so that I could get to these other pages. Yes. I mean, this should be probably, um, I 
I don't know what it should say, but RDF concept is not a possible name for one of these pages. Uh, basic RDF structures or something. A concept is not something that makes any sense when you have a concrete set of, you know, things that you're going to. Yes. I don't know how, how does this reference the RDF page? Did you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, this, should that also be a C also? No, it probably should be something which is a link from this page because we probably should have, okay, so is this the main page about Sparkle or not? Where is the main page about Sparkle? Yes, so Sparkle is divided in reading and writing, and reading is the Sparkle query. Okay, and that's not going to work. How do you think that's going to link to the front page, to, to our... Um... Um... We, we need one meta page in between. Yes, we need one page that's about Sparkle and RDF and so on. That's a top-level cool. page that just basically is about support for, uh, you know, something about graph stores, right? Yes. It's a basic graph store page, which points to both the Sparkle query, Sparkle, um, and this should be called something like, uh, you know, querying graph stores using Sparkle or some such other thing. Something like that, make sense? Yes. Um, and then this one should be called probably updating, um, or, um, let's see, writing to something like that, writing to graph stores using Sparkle. Yes. I have no clue what something like that does. Adds the data from the graph identified by. Isn't that the wrong way round? Shouldn't it be the thing that it's being added to first and the thing that's being added second? I think, I think that's how all these functions work. That's the existing one and that's the new one, right? You there? Yes. Yeah, that's the way around. It should surely work, just like assignments, etc. Now, I guess this is like copy file here, so I suppose this way around is right. Yes, it's like copy file. How can it? Oh, is an operator. These are this. So this one is an operator, but these are not it's operators. Why isn't they, this an operator? They are all operators. But but does this get applied to something? Yes. First you have import a store, and then you apply this operator to the store. So all Sparkle query and update functions are operators. I I have you know I have no idea how this I I can't comment on any of this. I mean this is really I sure hope this is going to get used. I I don't know. I also think, by the way, that using the slash slash notation is really obscure for these in these cases. I think it would be much better if you said sparkle load open bracket country store. Yes. I don't even know. This doesn't even work. That's not even correct, right? Doesn't slash slash have lower binding than equal sign? I believe it does. No, that, that one is correct. No, this works. Okay. Oh yeah, actually it has to work. Um, 
Okay. Okay, so this is applying Sparkle Select to. Is this does this work or is this um, I mean is this working in some branch or something? Yes, that works. That should work in master. Why does it say future? Because it's not optimized well enough to tell people to start using it. Okay. And where does it actually run? It's evaluating the queries on the client side. So it has to load in the whole entity store for isotopes? It's trying to load as minimal data as possible. But are we ultimately going to expose everything through a Sparkle endpoint of our own? We could maybe do that, but we haven't investigated it yet. So, but, but it might be nice to define IRIs for all our entities and properties. Yes, it probably would be. Although, I mean, why not? Except that, that does that imply that, the, I mean, the, the fact that we have IRIs doesn't necessarily imply that, that anybody can access them, right? Not necessarily. First of all, these IRIs can just stand for themselves. But it's usually helpful if they redirect to something or if they show some information. Well, fine. So they can go to entity and, pages and, and things. Yeah. And, and one idea is that when you enter the entity in entity syntax in Wolfram Alpha, you get information about it. So this would be a candidate nice IRI. Entity syntax. What do you mean by entity syntax? If you enter in Wolfram Alpha, entity square bracket. I see. Something. You could. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is working, right, for an entity store? Yes. Really? Does that work using the data integration system? Yes, but uh, I, I, I can't keep up with the database things changing, so I, it's resting for now until those things are more stable. Okay, what is this stuff that you're showing here? Those is a listing of all the Sparkle features and their corresponding symbolic versus string representation. Okay, well, what's the point here? I mean, okay, so it's just... Uh, Translation table. So, so arguably, there's some tutorial that's necessary for people who know yes. Sparkle to show the, the symbolic version. Yes. So that means if a Sparkle knowledgeable people come and want to write a symbolic version, then they would need such a well, table. This very document that you have here seems like a reasonable start. Yes. And Philip is working on some workflows. OK. What is this? Well. That's what I actually already did. I think it's okay. the best. All right. So, so now the next thing for this meeting was the discussion of existing endpoints. Is that correct? Yes. You had asked for a list, yeah. Okay. So this is, so I just ran your um, uh, data set thing. What is this? So what is this? This is Aaron's thing, yeah? Yes. So this is a big long list. How is this sorted? It's sorted by the number of triples. And, but this must be an approximation. Correct. Plenty of them are. What is LOD a lot? An aggregator of uh, things that are on here. Okay. Is 
That's a protein database with 13 billion triples. It appeared that way. Yeah. Well, that one says site can't be reached when I go to that European. Are these URLs correct? Eurostat link statistics. That URL says it can't be reached. Yeah, there are. This is not the most up to date or well maintained data set that uh, I imported here. Um, the uh, URLs should be kept current, but aren't, and it took some cleanup and finesse just to get it into this state. Okay. By the way, when I imported this here, why is this showing in red? This was this was a copy pasted data set, right? That has this stuff somehow. Because data set has additional information that's not documented, so syntax colory things it doesn't belong there. The same for meshes and many other functions. You know, we should have a way of handling these things that don't turn them red, that turn them gray or something. And these in cases like this, um, uh, you can. that 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 is something for the user assistance meeting. If um, Andrea could bring it to the user assistance meeting, that would be good. Yes, I can pass it to Parth. Okay. Uh, okay, now what's this, Aaron? Okay, this was uh, taking from that list that you were just looking at. This was taking everything that has a Sparkle endpoint, and I queried them for the number of triples, and these are how many were successful. Uh, the list you were just looking at is somewhere around 1,500, I believe. Uh, RDF collections, link data collections, uh, about 500 of them have Sparkle endpoints, and you're looking at a list of 101 that I was able to get a successful query on. And all I was querying for was the number of triples available at that endpoint. Okay, so the other 400 failed in some way, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, so it's not particularly impressive with people keeping up their endpoints but um you know there is a lot of data available to download and build your own endpoint uh, which is you know, the criteria for inclusion into this collection was not that you have a live endpoint but that you have rdf data available um Sorry, hold on a second here. So what are we doing with these? Uh, what will we do with these? These do not seem to be that fantastical. There's a lot of there's a lot of noise and a lot of weird things like the Alpine skier racers of Austria and such, but there are some things in there that are pretty uh, pretty people useful. Care in this What's that? Something people care in this part of the world. This one. Ski racers in Austria is important for Austria. Sure, sure. Two Austrians, yes. Absolutely. And um, But so uh, are we going to try and get these? What What are we going to do? Are we trying, going to put these in the data repository somehow or what? That's being discussed. Uh, Michael had brought that up as a possibility. Um, I have to talk to Alan about that and you know, we could talk about what we want to do with it. Uh, we could just curate a list of Sparkle endpoints and have the endpoints themselves and not so much the data. Yeah, that's possible. I yeah, I was more thinking kind of keeping an updated list of what's out there so that people quickly know what to import. Yeah. This is really pretty random stuff. Yeah, it's all over the place. Um, one thing that was a particular Particular interest that I poked around a bit is uh, D binary D B N A R Y. If you wanna, you'll be hitting that soon. This is sorted by title, yeah. um, and that's a multilingual translation. What, you, what is the Lemon model? What is the Lemon model? The Lemon model is a way of 
of representing uh, 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 word meanings and relationships across different human languages. Okay, it's interesting. Um, TVP deer and Basque, okay. Cool. Okay, what are the ones that are actually interesting here? I'm not sure anybody uh, looked closely enough at this list to make decisions about that. Baron has just produced this list of things that were actually functional. Yeah, that's kind of yet to be determined. There's all of this this Eagle Eye program I don't know much about, but it seems to be linking biomedical research from all kinds of different institutions. Some of the bio things might be of interest, but we haven't looked. There's a large collection of bio things that are available that don't have uh, their sparkle line points keep on timing out, but there's a huge, there's a bio. So, bio for example, the Library of Congress has a sparkle endpoint, doesn't it? They do not. They supply RDF data for you to make your own sparkle endpoint. The British National Library has a sparkle endpoint. Okay. Uh, the, uh, so what about these things where people are doing that, supplying RDF data? Is that something where we should have some graph stores in the data repository? Uh, we could, but a lot of times I, I, I think the size of a lot of them is going to be prohibited. But isn't but to keep them updated, wouldn't it not be much easier just have basically a data set or entity store of RDF resources out there, and then one thing is just kind of get the IRI and load the whole thing in? Possibly, or alternatively, have an extra if they're ones that we think are of persistent interest, like the Library of Congress one, perhaps um, to have that be part of this external identifier stuff. Yes, that sounds a bit more sane than than loading in the whole thing and having it as a data repository object. Right. Well, this document itself is quite interesting. Okay. All right. What else do we need to make sure to cover? Um, I think those are the main things so we know we, we, we will improve the guide pages and relate it. Fine. And then we need to figure out how we link them up to yes. the main system. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, this, is, this is interesting. This is interesting. Yeah. So this is probably a list, a pretty close to complete list of public Sparkle endpoints. Is that the work? Is that your belief? It's, I would say, half of them to to the majority of them. Yeah, because there's a lot of obscure stuff out there. But this is stuff that made, you know, this is of the big stuff. Yes, I, I'm reasonably confident that this is a... a um, okay, you know, that's deep, interesting. Comprehensive, I'll say. So I know the partnerships group is dealing with some people who are Sparkle, RDF, et cetera, enthusiasts. Can you make sure that they get a copy of this? Sure, sure. OK, sounds good. All so, right. so what, what are our concrete next steps after fixing the guide pages? Well, I think we're the freeze is tomorrow, and we're good to go, so far as I can see. OK. I, mean, I, had, I had a few comments there, like that, you know, that ad. Ah. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be right. go through some of the formulations uh, of the... I, I wrote down everything, so yes, I'll take care Okay, of but it. I mean, you know, the detection efficiency there was low, like 20% probably. So I think, you know, uh, Michael, I think, should go through these things yeah. one last time. Yeah. I mean, this is a package and it's experimental, so, you know, it's not absolutely cast in stone. The damage is limited. Right. Um all right, sounds good. Wonderful. Okay. It's very a lot, lot of stuff here. Okay, see you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.